Hi guys, back again, eh? <laughs> so it's like it's my favourite time of the week. Uh, it's Monday, and um, my real favourite time of the week was the weekend, of course. And uh, yesterday, um, I got to the car boot sale, car booty time. Um, after two weeks away, it was back again. So we back down to COVID level three. Uh, case you're dropping and um, they've allowed us to go back to the second hand car boot sale yeah the flea market um, so, so I've not been there uh, this is like three weeks yeah and um, had some luck if you saw the other video dumpster diving yeah got a, a, a bit of a bargain there uh, but anyway I went down there yesterday and I actually spent a hundred euros um, which is unusual for me to be quite honest just to spend that much there uh, I got three items and um, yeah, I think they're interesting. <clears throat> so let's see what we have. Yeah, so th th this this is the first thing that I got. Uh, after a bit of the fun and success we had with the NES clone, I've got one of these now. Uh, so this is from what I can figure out. Uh, I don't know much about vintage game consoles. I say I had a Spectrum back in them days. Uh, or the Commodore 64 and then the Amiga but um, yeah I think this is an Atari 2600 uh, clone yeah uh, rip off somebody say I'm not sure it I, I, I don't think it's like an original one it comes with 128 games built in uh, again I, I know exactly who's gonna be uh, advising me about this and telling me what this actually is yeah um, but we, yeah it's coming it's box which is quite nice with a power pack i'm not sure if this is the original or even the right one you never know with these things uh, nine volt ac 500 milliamp and a little little uh, jack plug on yeah um oh it seems to be like a hole here i'm not sure what goes in there is that the power the may or may not be something missing there i don't know i'm, I'm, I'm uh, thinking yeah, it certainly fits in the hole that's for sure no other connectors, so we've got that. Uh, we've got this little uh, modulator, I guess, or you know, either a, either it's a modulator, and this is video coming in, or it's a kind of like, uh, like a pass through for the antenna to the TV. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's maybe just like a little splitter, really. You know, an antenna splitter. Or it could be a modulator. Or there could be a modulator. I'm hoping this is composite video out, so I don't know. Oops, and I'm guessing that goes to there, yeah. That looks like it might be broken. Connector in there, yeah. Uh, we've got some wires with this. Well, this looks like a wire. Uh, two antenna, two game. Oh, yeah, that looks like an input that's broken from the antenna. Yeah, this looks like it might be composite video. I might be able to try that straight into my TV because I've, I've lost the remote and I can't scan it in, yeah? So we've got one of them. And we've got a couple of these. Um, which... Oh! <laughs> well, that one did that, yeah. Just that's the first time I've tried it. <laughs> maybe, maybe that needs a bit of, a, bit of uh, help, yeah. It was a one piece at the market and then a list of... Uh, user manual in Spanish and uh, games okay so anyway we have that um, yeah, this, this might be in case in need of a little bit of attention maybe something that doesn't seem to be operating anything I'm not even sure that one is oh no it, might, it, it probably works this little springy clip here by the looks of it yeah okay so that's something we can we, we, we can play with, yeah. Let me just see if I get it all back in the box and one piece again. Yeah, I've got I've got it back together. This seems to have some broken plastic pillars inside it. Yeah, that maybe a bit of aldite and uh, such like might help to uh, to fix that problem. Um, the other one seems to be in one piece, so at least we can have a look at that to see how it's supposed to be. Um, all this goes in the front of here. Uh, I paid uh, 25 euros for this, which is, I suppose, about, just about 20 pounds UK. I'm not sure what that is in dollars. Uh, more than 25 in dollars, maybe 30. Uh, I don't know if that's good. I had a quick look on eBay and I could see Atari 2600s, original ones, which I, I couldn't say anything quite like this, but I'm guessing this is a copy of that. 
and they seem to go anywhere from about like 40 pounds up to like over 100 yeah some of them have game cartridges with them so that may well make a difference but anyway yeah 25 euros invested on that one uh be interesting to see a does it work and b can we make any money from it yeah and see can we get it back in the box <laughs> can we get it back in the box okay just about so that's that one let's see what else we got okay so here's the next one um this on the front uh says tsunami dream yeah um there you go tsunami dream yeah oops there we go um beige dvd rom worth a few quid actually the beige ones the dvds anyway um looks like probably yeah and the beige lg uh dvd writer as well yeah um that's some pretty sticky tape on here that, you see it in the, in the inset camera not sure if this is meant to be on here somebody's just kind of like stuck their stuff on yeah nice brushed aluminium case very solid yeah um, uh, this is what's inside it um i think the best thing with this is get it onto a red camera and let's have a look what we've got here okay so um comes with a set of keys and the keys do actually work and this lifts off um might just be able to just unfasten that it's uh it's held on by like a a cable tie over here yeah um not sure is it yeah i think it might be plugged into something no i think it's just not even plugged in that yeah uh thermal take uh like a thermal tank it's built like a tank thermal take cool all your life this is uh, rusty but this is where the, the the fan is inside let's see if we can just uh release the cable that's holding this in place okay yeah i've taken off it's very solidly built amd of some sort yeah motherboard asus m2n dash e so we can have a look to see what that is uh, a couple of sticks of uh, ram in here uh, the guy says this is working he also swore it got six gig six gig of ram in two times three gig which i, I thought nah it's got it's got that's a two gig oh <laughs> I wonder if they're both 2 gig. Yeah, they look, they look like they match each other, yeah. So it's got 4 gig of RAM in it. Um, and, get, and this is like some sort of AMD 64 or something. Let's have a look. M2N-E. Oh yeah, I remember now why I said it came with 6 gig of RAM. Because it, it came with this as well, you gave me this. It wasn't in the machine. I don't even know if it would fit in it. Um, this is a DDR3, I think. Um, it's a 4 gig, and that's 2 and 2, so it's, it's 8, so we were still wrong. <laughs> we were still wrong. Um, yeah, so stick of RAM came with it as well, yeah. Let's have a look now to see uh, what this takes processor wise. So, um, we can see um, M2NE processor support, uh, AMD, oh, it's got AI, AI overclocking, okay, overclocking. So, Athlon 64s it takes, oh, Athlon 64FX, 64X2, um, seems to take a lot of processors actually. Uh, loads and loads and loads of processors. Athlon 2x2. <coughs> More. Athlon 2x3. Okay. Athlon 2x4. Athlon x2. Athlon. Oh, Phenom 2x2. Phenom 2x3. Yeah, so x4, Phenom 2s. It seems like this takes all sorts of uh, AMD processors at a type. I thought Intel made lots of processor types, but this is a huge list. Phenom X3, Phenom X4, all times for everyone to say it. AMD second generation Opterons, okay, Semprons, Sempron X2s. Okay, and you can see there's green ticks by just about just about all of them. So uh, this seems to take uh, most 
mouse that will fit into this socket yeah um, I'm guessing this was a gaming rig I mean the fact it's built into this thermal tank yeah <laughs> the fact it's built like a tank and it has some sort of GPU in here um, obviously something of the era yeah, in here and uh, it's PCIe it's a shame if it been something with uh, um, uh, AGP this would be worth more these days but yeah there we go I think the best thing with this you know is just let's just plug it in and see what it does I mean it's obviously been switched on before um, I suppose I could just check for shorts here but um, yeah let's have a quick look and then let's just get plugged in and let's see if it actually does anything okay so yeah quick check um, just go to ground no there's no short there it's just capacitors charging up here uh, capacitors all look good just looking down there um, so yeah the capacitors look okay um, I'll start to zoom down you can have a look yourselves okay so there you go uh, you can see what's in there say all the capacitors look nice um, some sort of silent GPU not sure what it is without uh, taking it out and having a look uh, just uh, yeah a mixture of PCI and PCIe a uh, mixture of uh, IDE and SATA no hard drive in this one um, I'm guessing there was uh, but there isn't now but yeah it looks like the SATA cables went over here so we'll probably have SATA hard drives I think the first thing with this is let's just uh, pull it in and let's just see what it actually does yeah right so what's going to happen um, I've got um, PS2 keyboard I find it quite usually easier to get into the BIOS on older machines so we'll switch that on We'll now see if we can figure out if this thing has an on-off switch, which I'm sure it does somewhere. I've pressed it, and nothing seems to happen. Um, everything's on. Everything's on. There's a blue light lit up in the back of a fan here, so there's obviously power in the thing, but it doesn't seem to. The on-off switch seems a little bit dodgy to me okay so this thing doesn't seem to actually uh, switch on uh, just check for obvious things like the switch fell off yeah okay i just had a quick look uh, the power switch on the front feels okay the it's attached to the motherboard down here on the on the wires yeah so the switch is attached this doesn't appear to start at all it appears to be dead apart from the fact i can see blue led in fact, you probably see that yourself, blue LED here lit up on the fan, yeah. So there's obviously some standby uh, power getting into here. So, yeah, power suppliers won't start or something else. I mean, it just, just does not start, yeah. So that can be the topic of, of another video. Okay, let's have a look at the last thing that we got at the weekend. Okay, so that thermal tank, <laughs> yeah. Um, he wanted uh, 50 euros for that, and I said no no way it's, it's old it's old mate uh, and then he instantly dropped down to 30 and I wanted to pay 25 and um, after much arguing and he still he was insistent on 30 and I was insistent on 25 and uh, I went I went to walk away and he said okay 25 um, so yeah that's what that cost me um, I didn't have any profit in it I mean obviously it doesn't work at the moment um, but we'll have to see what's the problem with that one but even so, I'm not sure, uh, the case is rather nice, I will say that. Um, yeah, so uh, that was the uh, second one. Uh, the uh, little games console, by the way, she said it's working. Again, I don't know. Uh, that's the same one I bought the NA NES uh, rip-off from, and that did work. So it might do. Uh, the, the, the thermal tank, that came from somebody else, I've not bought from him before. And this is the third item. Um, I'll just get the camera, well, I think you can see it already, actually. So this is the third one, yeah, uh, Mars Gaming case, um, DVD writer again, a card reader, uh, and a little, uh, well, no window in the side of this one, yeah, but we can have a look to see what's in it. You won't have to do much mass now to realise I actually paid the guy. 50 euros for this yeah 50 which is the second highest i've ever paid at the market for a computer i think 65 was the most i ever paid for one so 
500 watt power supply nice attractive red back plate um, only one stick of uh, RAM hmm looks similar it's not the same one stick of RAM in there uh, which surprised me a bit cooler master uh, so you, you probably can't see the right you know, it's too much reflection yeah it was like a cooler master Evo or something like that uh, Oh yeah, you can see it now. See the Cooler Master emblem, yeah. Cooler Master. Uh, Asus Republic of Gamers Strix uh, GTX 970. Yeah. Uh, and the motherboard is um, it's an Asus, I think. I think it's an easy I don't know what the motherboard is I can't see but it does say down here socket 1150 so this is the fourth generation yeah anything from a Celeron Gold a Pentium Gold i3 i5 i7 well, I'm hoping because this has the Republic of Gamers GTX 970 in it that maybe this has got a decent processor as well and it was that that made me think you know what 50 he wanted 50 he wanted 50 euros for this uh, I offered him 40 he said no 50 is all every end and I said I look and this is a one terabyte hard drive I'm guessing this might have had an SSD in. I mean there's two hard drives in it that's a one terabyte that one I don't know what it is I can see this one's a Western digital one terabyte you probably see the label there sure, sure that's a Western digital mm. um, so again I think the best thing with this one is let's uh, let's plug it in and see what it does yeah let's, let's see what it does again I'll just check the shorts on the 12 volt uh, and then we'll, we'll just try it okay I had a quick look I just checked on the the yellow cables coming in the 12 volt there's no shorts there checked on the one on the GPU there's no short there seems a little bit loose in the socket but um, yeah, let's just try it. Let's 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 give this a go. I mean, I think we we'll have to assume this has been switched on before in its current state. Yeah. Um, power supply down at the bottom. So power on that. Five hundred watt. Um, yeah. Let's uh, give this a go. Power on there. And let's. Uh, there's a light lit up on the front. Let's give it a go. Wait, well, power's on. Fans are spinning. GPU fans spinning. GPU fans stopped again. Oh, processor fan speed. No, it shut itself down. Oh, now it's powered itself back up again. I think this is not unusual for these UEFI BIOS. All the fans are going again. GPU fans stopped. CPU fan spinning. And shut itself down. Let's give it a third one. Let's just see what it does. And I think maybe we'll take the GPU out and just try the motherboard. It has, it has onboard video. Yeah, much the same. GPU fan stopped. Main CPU fan spinning. Shut down. Okay, so that seems to be stuck in some sort of boot loop. Uh, he also said this was working as well. Uh, but I take that as a pinch of salt, you know. Um, okay, let's uh, just try the motherboard on its own with this and see if that uh, uh, if it works then. Okay, I have the GPU out of it. Um, it looks all right. This is like a half towards decent-ish graphics card. I mean, you know, <laughs> so hard to bloody get these things these days. Uh, GTX 970. This is actually faster than any of the cards I have at the moment. The fastest I have is the R9 290, which I repaired on the previous video. Came from the same car boot sale. Uh, so this is this will go in my PC and the R9 390. Sorry, 290. We'll go on to eBay, and I just keep, you know, as I find something better, I just move along. Yeah, I just refuse to pay the price of the, these uh, GPUs at the moment. Okay, so I've disconnected the SATAs uh, and the USB three, so I just have the power basically. Uh, just going to use USBs as well for now. Let's take everything off this board. Yeah, um, even the audio. Let's take the audio connector off. Yeah. So we're back to basics. Okay, let's see. Uh, if this actually will uh, start up now um, power switch CPU fans running uh, 
No, nothing, no bleeps, no anything, yeah. And it shuts back down again. It's a gigabyte motherboard, by the way, I can see it now. Uh, B85, GA, B85M, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's not going to just power up, so that, that that's the video, yeah. So we've got two repair videos coming from this. Um, let's have a quick look at that games console. They said that was working. Let's have a quick look, see what condition that's in, yeah. So this owes me 50 euros, yeah. Complete with its GPU. Uh, it's a quite nice case, really. Um, can I make any money out of it? <laughs> we'll have to see where we we'll have to see what's what with this one. Um, okay, let's look at this uh, little games console. Okay, so here's our little games console. Um, just quick check the power supply, see if that's working. It says 9 volts DC on it. Um, 16 volts, doesn't surprise me because it's not regulated. Uh, just stick that in there. Uh, and then I'm I'm just taking the assumption this is assumption this is this is composite video out so let's connect that to the TV and see if anything happens. Okay, so I, I tried that with the composite video leads and I didn't get anything. But thinking about it, I don't think that could be composite video because you wouldn't get any audio. Yeah, I'm thinking it's probably RF, uh, and this is just kind of like a, a splitter. That kind of like effects where you can alter the game one direction or the other by by the looks of it yeah uh, so let's open this up and let's have a quick look i mean the power light came on when i plugged it in so i know there's power getting into it i'm just interested to see what what this is and it's probably going to be an rf modulator uh, the problem with that is i have a small portable tv but unfortunately at some point i lost the remote control and although i can effectively operate it using the buttons I can't get into the menu. I, I just can't. I've tried all the various combinations, two buttons at once and whatever. And I can't get into the menu, so I can't do an RF scan, <laughs> which is a bit of a pain. I mean, I could maybe. This might have an adjustment on it for the RF frequency. Or it might be that I can flick through previous scanned frequencies and that are stored, and just by chance I might hit the right frequency. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I really need to, to, to do something to sort that problem out uh, since I'm starting to find more of this stuff and buy more of this stuff. Need a little portable TV, yeah. Uh, or maybe get a remote for mine, but it's some strange grunder. Uh, I'm not sure I can get one. I'll have a look. Okay, so that's back off that thing. Oh, very simple. That's not a modulator, I, I don't think. Oh, a coil. I don't know. <laughs> At this moment in time, I don't know. I'm going to have to look up the uh, the instruction manual for this. Yeah, that's what it says in the little leaflet that's came with it. It says, uh, Joan One, John One Telephonic Enterprise Company Limited. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> that's who made it, anyway. There you go. That's what we have, yeah. Um, CPU, I'm guessing. ROM, I'm guessing. Maybe uh, that looks like a CMOS. That looks like a CMOS. Must be some RAM in it, you would think, somewhere. Unless this is like a mixture of CPU and RAM, like a microcontroller. UM6599. Uh, I think that's very similar to what was in that NES. And this 4000 that yours says, yeah. So you can see what's in here. I say this uh, Jono One Telephonic Enterprise Company Limited, who made this thing? Okay. Some sort of <laughs> What's this thing here? Oh God! This is where you push the buttons. I mean, look what they've done here. They have like a spit metal springy clip, and what looks like a staple in the motherboard, and you push the button, and it operates this metal springy clip, and touches the staple. Well, sta staple bit of wire. Yeah. Obviously, when they made this, they didn't actually want to buy switches. Yeah, you know, very, uh, very basic thing. Okay, let me see what the instruction manual says about the connections to it. Okay, so I figured it out anyway. I mean, 
this is sort of just saying connect antenna switch box yeah um, onto the back of the TV set marked VHF mm, not even UHF each one to have one kind of game connect your antenna VHF um, tells you a bit about the console cartridges uh, and then this is the uh, instructions in Spanish yeah 1990 so we know when it's from now I had my Amiga then I had my Amiga in 87 or when when did, when did the when did the Amiga 500 come out that's when I bought mine one of the first ones to buy them um huh lots of games uh. well this seems to list more than 120 games that it said it had in it interesting huh I looked inside this thing that I thought might be a modulator and look it's just a it's just a, a potentiometer a slider yeah so that tells us that this is a modulator so this little thing with a coil here and these transistors and this little tuning coil and there's a little bit more here i'm guessing this forms a an rf vhf modulator how am i going to test it how am i going to test this if i did have me remote for the tv i'm not sure it has it probably does have vhf Okay, I think we have a, a failure of like, the ability to test this at the moment. Uh, that's that's the uh, the problem here. So um, I'm going to have to find a way, figure out how I, I can uh, do something with it, yeah, and get a picture. Okay, guys, so that's 25 euros as well, uh, which may work um, if I can find a way to actually test that it works or not. Uh, my TV at home might have a... I'll have a look. Okay, guys. See you soon on the next one. Ciao for now.